one thing. All right, I forgot to start my recording button. I had to do this a fourth time. All right. Now it's acting really weird here. Okay. All right, hopefully that's gonna work. All right, so if you can hear me, let me know. Hey, Julie, thank you. Hey, Chris. Good deal. I hope that means you can hear me as well. If something happens, let me know. Um, I had demonstrator council last night, uh, an honor that I was given this year that I get to uh, work with Chad Williams and four amazing women from the Midwest. And uh, the sound didn't work there either. So after numerous attempts, I finally logged on with my phone. And you know, it's really hard to see a document on your phone. Uh, that was typed up, but hey, we made it work. So anyway, um, thank you for bearing with me for trying to join me for, I don't know, it feels like the hundredth time this week to try and get things going. Um, how many of you are a fall person? Do you like fall leaves? Is that your kind of thing? Let me know in the comments. Um, or are you another season? What season is it that you like the best? For me, um, I guess, I wouldn't say really fall, but I love the fall colors. If I needed to choose a favorite uh, for my Stampin' Up! colors, I would probably go with the Regals, which I think the Regal colors work so nicely with, um, the Regals work really nicely with fall colors. Oh, let's see here. Oh, good, Chris, thank you, you can hear me. All right, so I've stalled long enough, let's go ahead and get started. So I want to share with you this fun pocket card. It's one that um, I received years and years ago from a swap, and I've been hanging on to it for probably 10 plus years. And I decided I'm going to make it and then give the old one away, and then I'll have a sample with new product. So the first thing I did, this is a five and a half by 11 piece of paper, and this die is from Bloom Dies. And uh, it works really well. Seasonal dies has one that would probably work. The rectangle dies, you would need to do it twice, move it over, but it would work as well. So what I did is I put this, it's about one and a fourth inches from the edge. And then I ran it through the die cutting machine and it cut out this little piece. So the first tip I wanna share with you tonight is if you're using painter's tape or tear tape that's really sticky, what you wanna do is take that tape and rub it on your skin or on uh, your shirt or fabric and get some of that stickiness off of it. Because if you don't, it's gonna tear your paper. So the first one I did yesterday, I think it was, I didn't do that. And then as it went through the die cutting machine, it pushed it down even harder. And so it ended up that um, it tore my paper. So just a tip, make sure you kind of use something to help get rid of some of that stickiness. So then I'm going to take my bone folder and fold this in half like normal. And then it's gonna go this way. So I'm going to stamp some leaves now and put my die back so I don't lose that. I'm this time going to use pumpkin pie and bumblebee. My paper's bumblebee. If you want a more subtle image, use bumblebee for all of your images here. Um, I wanted a little more contrast this time. So I'm going to use the pumpkin pie for the leaf and then um, the bumblebee like I didn't clean them yesterday, which is quite possible. I was a little frazzled, but it didn't work. So I'm using the gorgeous leaves. Love this set. I love how they've added these texture pieces to just give a little more variation. Um, the dyes are gorgeous. Um, you can cut out these three images, but then it's got several other leaves as well. I'll try to pull it out before we're done. All right, 
So when I stamp and I want it to look like it's random, I start in one corner and then try to go in a diagonal line. Ooh. And get ink. Now I'm really crafting. I got ink on my hands. All right, so we want to go the opposite direction here. So you can kind of see that's in a diagonal line. Now I'm going to come back and you're going to fill in the spots. Now this is this way. This one's going down. So I think I'm going to go with this here and go that direction. And then over here, pull that one and go this way. Now I'm going to come back and fill in this spot. And since I have those two directions, I think I'll go this way. And so when your card is finished, it looks like it's real random, but you actually kind of had some lines to use so that um, you don't end up with real big bald spots or issues. Now I do have them pretty straight here in a line, which I'm not thrilled about, but um, we'll be covering part of that up. All right, that uh, spot in there kind of messed up my normal diagonals here. So I'm going to go back just with these dots and add them in just to give it a little more texture and oomph. And I probably wouldn't have to worry about that. That's just habit of thinking, oh, I'm going to have the inside. We're actually going to close it up so it really wouldn't matter. So there's my pattern for that. And for my card piece here that's going to go on the inside, I'm going to get, again stamp my leaves. And I'm going to go like that. And then we're going to add in some of the spots. And then I've been needing a lot of thank you cards recently. So I'm going to use a paper, uh, pumpkin pie again. Stamp this in the middle. Like that. And that is from Plentiful Plants. I love this. A little note with the biggest thanks. I think that's. I can use that a lot, and I do use it a lot. Now for this long piece, I'm using from Heartfelt Wishes, this Much Gratitude. So it is a red rubber, so I wouldn't have to um, have my stamp mat underneath, but I always think it just helps make it look even nicer. And I ink it with the wrong color. Clean it off, ink it with bumblebee. Awesome, all right. So I am super excited today. I have had an idea in my head for several months. Once I heard Stampin' Up! was gonna start having kits that we could use for classes, I've had this idea and I am so excited that tonight, I finally had some of the details fall into place, which I'm just so pumped about. So on October, I believe it's the 21st, it's a, it's a Saturday. Um, I don't wanna tell you the wrong date. It's the 23rd. the 23rd of October. I'm gonna be teaching uh, and holding a class called Cards in Conversation. And it is designed for new stampers that have never stamped before. These are easy kits that you can create um, with a little assistance from me or not. You probably could figure it out on your own. And we're going to meet at Bikes Ice Cream Shop, which is here in Baser they have a patio room and they're going to let me use it. So we are gonna stamp from one to three. Uh, your admission fee will also include either a single ice cream cone scoop or a, a drink of some kind with them. And then uh, we're gonna make cards and stamp because I think people are so hungry to just be together and spend time. And so I will be sharing all the details soon. Uh, I've been holding off on advertising it because I could not get a location. Um, that is one of the hardest things right now is finding a place where we can meet. Um, so I'm super excited. I can't wait for that. Um, 
all those details to come together. All right, so back to the card. Um, so this is the piece that I cut out and I need oh, maybe about an inch of it. And it does not need to be precise, all right? So the, the nice thing with this card is that it pulls out and it stops. So the card doesn't come out. Oh my goodness, are we upside down? It is upside down, isn't it? All right, hang on, guys. There we go. Ooh, that got bright all of a sudden. Goodness. Okay, so tell me, does that look right? If it's not right, please tell me. They have changed so many things on Facebook. Last night, the whole time I was doing recording on my computer, it showed that everything was written backwards. That you couldn't read. I mean, it was like in the mirror. So the whole time I'm talking about, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, this is backwards. And I spent like 20 minutes trying to fix it last night. And then when I started watching the recording, first I discovered there was no sound. And then I discovered that it was the right way for you guys. So figure that one out. Ah, they try to help us and it makes things worse. Okay, so I'm hoping that's right. I'm not hearing anything. Okay, Julie says it looks right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so back to these little tabs. I'm going to use tear tape because I wanna make sure that when people pull these out, that it works properly and that it doesn't come apart. So I'm using tear tape on the end here. I'm gonna put it on both of them. I'm using, I'm so thankful for my mom and her computer. My computer is back at the repair shop again. And today they said they're probably sending it into Apple. So it's probably gonna be close to two weeks before I get it back. And I would be lost if I didn't have a computer. So very thankful that mom's willing to share with me. Ah, sticky fingers. All right, so one of the things I learned, and now I just pulled all the tape off. Um, the first time I made this uh, was that you want to have your little tabs here up just a little ways from the bottom. Because if they're right at the bottom, this piece here can get caught and it looks kind of funny and plus you just don't want it to look like that. So you're gonna go up about, not even, probably in between a fourth and an eighth of an inch. And you wanna make sure they're even. I also made that mistake. I didn't make them even. And so then it pulled at an angle and I, I was not happy with that good friend of ours, um, or that I'm on site council with, she shared something the other day that as demonstrators, we make all the mistakes so that when you make what we make, you don't make the mistake. And I thought, wow, that is, that's really true. We hope that we can teach you all the things not to do that we did when we were creating. So, all right, just looking to see if I got any more tech issues. All right, so now these are the black dimensionals. If you haven't tried these, you need to. The nice thing with the black is that they don't draw your eye, attention, the attention of your eye. So when you use them, they're just not as obvious as the white ones. Now I still use white, but when I know that the pocket here is going to be somewhat visible, I'm using the black so you don't notice it quite as much. And you'll notice I'm putting them right on the very edge because we don't want our little tabs to get caught and we're gonna make sure that they fit right. And this is unusual in the sense that the card is actually upside down. We're putting the uh, open part at the top so you don't have to worry about this little pocket piece sliding out, which is nice too. All right, before we put the pocket in there, we're gonna to go to the trio punch and punch a hole for a ribbon. Love this. It's got the hole like this. It's got the corner rounder and then that pretty little image. 
this is some of the bumblebee gingham. And I like this so much that I just about didn't have enough on this roll. Good thing I already ordered another one. All right. I made this a little long. I'll probably end up cutting some of that off. I, as soon as I finished yesterday, we quickly ate and then I had my demonstrator council. And then after that was over, I was so frazzled that I did not get ready for tonight and recut all my pieces because I've used all my pieces. All right, so we're going to put it in like this, put your ribbon through so it's all face down. And now when I slide, see how it's gonna hit those dimensionals? So we're gonna trim off just a little bit more because you want it, if possible, you want it to fill up these holes here, but you don't want it hitting the dimensionals. All right. There we go. All right. And now we're going to close it. Another lesson I learned is that you could close it. I used tear tape for the first time because I really wanted it to close nicely, but it doesn't slide nearly as well. It slides, but see how it just, it, it gets stuck. It just doesn't work very well. So then I went and tried the dimensionals and look how easy this slides. Isn't that nice? See how nice that slides? All right, so we've got a couple more things to do here. I'm going to add this much gratitude. You could pop it up if you want to, but I decided that since I already had dimension here and I wanna make, I will put this in the mail, I didn't want it to get too thick. So I'm going to um, just use my liquid glue. If you're a customer or a team member, you should be getting an email. It'll either be tonight or in the morning um, about all my events for October, November, and December. All right, isn't that cool? I love this idea. I don't know why it's simple, but I love how the piece doesn't come out. I like it that it all stays together and you're not worried about losing pieces here. You could make this inside piece a little bit bigger, but because it's got that divot right in there, I, I worried about it getting caught on that. All right, then um, on one of them, I added some bling. So I put some of the champagne on there. So I want you guys to tell me in the comments, do you think I should add the bling or leave it just the um, without the bling? So do I add the dots or not the uh, rhinestones? So let me know what you think there. Um, I am gonna start being a little more interactive, I hope, where I ask some questions and you guys help me do some of the design. Um, I'm also going to be teaching to Monday nights at seven. Um, Schedule-wise, Tuesdays are just causing issues with some other things I have going. So Mondays at seven, you'll be getting that email that will remind you of the time. Julie says bling. Bling for sure, all right. And we'll go with bling because Lois says bling too. All right, so we're gonna grab some of these champagne rhinestones and I'll add them to the, I think I'll probably add it to the slider and the uh, label. All right, another thing I wanna share, I had so many things I wanted to tell you tonight. I hope I remember them all. I can about guarantee you I won't. All right, well, I took goodies to school. I don't see one of my paper piercers or my, we'll just use scissors. Okay, um, so Stamp Camp, Several of my uh, regular customers have been asking, when are we doing stamp camp again? And so we finally got that put together. It's gonna be, it's going to be, oh my goodness. It's going to be November 6th, it's a Saturday. It will be from 9.15 until about 1.30. It's going to be at the VFW in Baser. And we've already got the spot reserved. I have three other ladies that are going to teach with me. We are so excited. 
it just feels good to start having some of the events again that we used to have all the time. Um, let me show you my two cards. Each of us will teach two projects, so you'll go home with eight cards. We are going to have uh, make and takes. You'll do eight. We're going to have door prizes. We're going to have ordering specials. We're going to have retired merchandise on sale. Some of the ladies want to bring cards that you can purchase their cards for sale. We'll provide some food and it's just a lot of fun. Right now we have seven spots left. So if you want to join us, you probably need to get your name in pretty quick because you don't want to miss out. So here are my two cards. This one I created for um, we had a demonstrator meeting on Saturday with this merriest moment stamp set. And so I created this fun fold card. So you'll make one of these with me. And the other one, I love the stocking set that I was given as a gift. And I used some of the velvet paper for the top of the stocking. It's just so soft. Love that. We're using one of the square doilies. And then this one opens like this. So you have a small little greeting on the inside. So these are the two you'll make with me. And then the other three ladies are also creating two projects. So like I said, you'll do eight. And I have really good teachers that are, I think, do an awesome job of sharing their love of stamping with everyone. And uh, it's just so fun to be together. We're just really excited. All right, so I told you about that. Um, email coming out for October, November, December. Would you believe every weekend in November, I have something. Stamping up two weekends, out of town one weekend, and then the next weekend's Thanksgiving, and I never do anything on Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so trying to put events in November, uh, you're going to see some unusual things. I've got some Mondays, I've got some Tuesdays. So check out those dates. Um, I am going to start a Christmas buffet. I'll be adding different Christmas cards so you can add to your Christmas stash. And let me show you, speaking of Christmas, this was the car, other card I demoed on Saturday with the Mary's Moments. The so same thing here, stamped. It really slid nice. I don't know why I'm giving. And the Merry Christmas was from the snowman set. So those are the two cards for today. I did not get any more samples made, but I'm just thankful we actually made it this far. You'll see here, I kind of made this card here a little bit smaller. This one I used the rectangle, so I did two openings, which is a little bit bigger. All right, I had to move my club technique class. Um, I forgot that I promised a babysit case in this Thursday, and we had some stuff come up for Friday, so it's moved to next Thursday. I'm going to do it at 3.30 in the afternoon and 7 in the evening, if you can join me. Let me show you. This is one of the cards you're going to make. It's called a tower card. And this is spring, summer, fall, and winter. So I see this as a gift that you could give to someone that they could set on their desk at work or next to their recliner as a reminder. Of course, I did mess with it enough that if you wanted to stamp your tree at the edge, you could write a little greeting. And I thought maybe in each season, you could put a uh, love you or thinking of you some little greeting for a friend or, or family member. The other thing we're going to do at class is I'm going to show eight different ways that you can add color to our leaves. And the layout of the card designs will be where you decide on this section which technique you want to use. So this one here is just direct. I had very vanilla paper, sponged the colors, stamped the leaves over the top, added in those little dots and then added some uh, leaves there. This one here is emboss resist. So you stamp your leaves, emboss resist means that we put embossing powder on it, heat it up, and then you sponge over the top. So the leaves stay white and then you add your color. This one's my favorite. I love the layout with it. These are some of the leaves here. Um, I added a bunch of color to just a piece of cardstock, waited for it to dry and then emboss the whole thing. And so that's, it's shimmery. You can't really see it here. It's really shiny and pretty. This is a different take on Jacob's coat. Jacob's coat is where you sponge the color underneath, then you emboss it, and then you put color over the top. Typically you do it in black. So there's the black. 
This one I did in soft suede. This one I did in cinnamon cider. And this one, oh, I was, I lied. This was Night of, uh, Night of Navy, and then that's black. And so I just think it's really cool the different look that you can get by just sponging in the different colors. And that one's another resist. Um, you're gonna get to play with our chalks and add them to the leaves for some color. Um, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to try some new and different things this fall. The new Stampin' Up! Year started October 1st. And so um, I'm actually working on a, cut, a class layout with a friend from Australia. And so we're gonna put together some projects and then each of us teach those classes. So I can't wait um, to share that with you. All right. Told you about stamp camp, change to the club class, showed the club projects. Oh, one other thing, and this will be in the email too, is that I am going to host a preferred customer event on January 3rd, 2022. If you attend three events between today and December 31st, you get to come to that event for free. We're gonna have make and take store prizes. You will get it to use new celebration and January to June product from 2022 and just be treated specially because I appreciate your business. So thank you for joining me. I pray this worked. You can see it, you can hear it and it worked. Let's hope. I will be on Monday. Again, um, email comes out with all the dates of everything. But from now on, I'm gonna try Mondays at seven and uh, hopefully people will be able to join me then. All right, thank you so much for joining me. Ladies, I, it was so nice to have you adding comments in as I work today. That just makes it so much more fun to know that people are there. So have a wonderful evening and I will see you Monday night at seven. It'll be a create with me. So be watching for details so you can have your products ready and stamp along with me. Bye guys.